Hey guys, DJ Parson here and I'm bringing you another game of the Squid Game Tournament. The special tournament with special rules. We are still in game for the Tug of War. You saw the first game uh, of my group where I played in, but uh, of course in each group there are five players. Uh, sorry, yeah, ten players who play in five groups. So five uh, versus five, uh, ten versus ten total and five times two versus two. I hope that uh, confused everybody. Uh, but yeah, this is the next game of our um, our matches that I want to show, and it is the one of the umbrella pullers. The umbrella pullers have a special rule that uh, they score six, three, one, and zero points, but only those count who have an even culture in the end. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna be very interested uh, to see how you pull that off, how you try to pull that off to have an even culture score at the end. Um, and of course, you're also gonna see the uh, usual team player uh, shenanigans. So I'm really excited to share this match with you guys. So let's get in there. So here in my group we have uh, Cashmill, This Is Not A Smile, Hardco and Clonefish. And the guys from my team are This Is Not A Smile and uh, Hardco. So number three and uh, two and three are playing together and then one and four again. Um, so I'm of course rooting for This Is Not A Smile and Hardco, green and red. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's hope that they make it for a great team game. We're gonna take a look at the Leaders and Wonders. I don't know how much they will matter. I mean, <laughs> the biggest thing is uh, to get an even culture score in the end. Uh, but that is only in the end. You also have to try to win, so get as many points as possible. So it's still gonna be a normal team, a uh, normal team game. We just try to uh, have an even culture score at the end of the match. So we have uh, Pierre, we have Bach, Columbus, Caesar, Aristotle. Acropolis. I mean, I have no idea what we are looking here for, uh, so I'm just gonna start the match and not pretend like I know uh, which wonders could be great or not. I I'm pretty sure these guys probably uh, looked at it more closely and maybe had an idea from the start. Um, like, I would guess that a big impact comes from the impacts. So we have some uh, impacts that give an even score, some give an odd score. Uh, so. I guess the most important part is to, at the end of the match, know how many uh, or which impacts are in, which ones give even or odd score, and then balance everything out to try and get uh, an even one. Uh, so especially the end scoring, the very late game will be very exciting for the special rules. The rest is probably just going to be a normal team game. So we skipped over that. Cash Cashmill uh, has Hammurabi. There's not a smile with the Roman Roads hardcore. Engineering Genius and Clonefish with Aristotle and the Acropolis. And that starts us right off into H uh, H1. We have Kashmir electing Hammurabi, building a mine. We'll increase pop. Does he grab a wonder? No, urban growth and cultural heritage. So just a couple of yellow cards. Then this is not a smile, goes for Homer. Urban growth, rich land. You could see the first team game thing going on. He's gonna put the Colossus, uh, Colosseum on one, so Hardco could grab that one. So uh, maybe that's why he wants to grab all of these cards. He's gonna start to build on the round row. It's very interesting because he can't even finish that next turn. But yeah, we see indeed Hardco will grab the Colosseum, grab the Knights. Uh, so nicely played by these two guys. And it looks like we're gonna have some aggressive early game, maybe. Alexander, Knights and the Colosseum, but both players skipping the first mine, which is interesting. Clownfish does build the mine, elects Aristotle, grabs a theology to get an extra science from Aristotle and have that uh, happy face solution. Kismal goes for irrigation, builds a lab, increases pop, probably breakthrough. And then with this last one, maybe cultural heritage. Yeah, use the cultural heritage to get the one extra science and the culture, of course. So the enemy team, I'm gonna call them the enemy team since this is my team, uh, the other one. So the enemy team is doing pretty standard stuff, building up their mines and uh, their labs. Same goes for clonefish. So uh, my team is doing a little bit more, yeah, exciting. I, I'm gonna call it exciting. Um, something special for the special game. We get the development of agriculture from uh, green here. Just gonna grab the iron, build a lab here, okay, and increase pop. 
I mean, it's it's something new. That's that's for sure. I'm I'm gonna be honest. I'm not 100% convinced, uh, but we're gonna see how it turns out. I I usually never like to skip the third bronze mine for a couple of turns. I mean, yeah, you have the realm worlds, but if you don't finish it, and he's not gonna be able to finish it next turn either. Um, but he has iron now. That's great. So yeah, there's still good things going on. Hardco will increase pop twice. Build that mine, that's good. Grabs Urban Growth. Really, the Urban Growth over electing Alex. His hand is really, really full, so I'm a little bit worried that maybe he should have used this turn for other things, like building on the Colosseum, um, stuff like that. Electing, electing Alex, you have to do that at some point. But he decides he wants to have the Urban Growth instead. Clonefish, oh, they get the open borders agreement, but, oh, apparently Clonefish does not know what's going on. Um, yeah, that that happens sometimes in, in these matches. Uh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that Clonefish apparently has no idea that he's playing in a team game and is offering the open borders agreement to Hardco. Um, so he does not know he's playing in a team with Cashmill. We had that in some of our matches as well, uh, some of our groups. Where people just didn't know what the rules were because they didn't read the tournament rules before accepting the tournament. Casual goes for iron, upgrades one, grabs the rich land. So this is not a smile. Pushes, we get the development of civil life. He can use that to go for the iron, can upgrade that already. Grabs himself the knights, increases pop. And finally elect Somer. So next turn, I mean it's gonna take some time to build the knights, but he could use the extra rock soon for just building some warriors. Hardco goes for philosophy and Nostradamus. Finally elects Alex. So you will have to use him next turn and then I maybe afterwards he can go for Nostradamus. So Clonefish pushes. We get the development of markets from him. And he will finish the Acropolis. Grab the coat. He could develop that already, but no. Grabs the Theocracy. Builds Aurora to not have corruption. So he's gonna go up to 3 strength. Casual goes for irrigation here and iron. So he's filling up a great infrastructure. He's definitely not looking like he's in bad position. Um, but there could be trouble for him if my team decides to go for military. They both have knights, hardcore even has Colosseum, so maybe they can try and punish him. But at this point, Casual is having the perfect game. Middle or even early part of H1 and he's already on 3 iron and the irrigation is going too. So he's definitely looking strong. Probably the strongest position at the moment. There's not a smile, we'll go and finish the realm roads, grabs irrigation, builds the warrior with the extra rocks, I like that, and that's gonna be it. So for rock production now, he's still not built the third mine, it's gonna be interesting if he stays with that, maybe upgrades one bronze to iron and then uh, says now he has enough, especially with the realm roads, he could do that. Uh, so that's gonna be interesting, there's also much pitch that could be very interesting too. Hardco will go for development of crafts and finish the Colosseum. Can develop knights, oh that's nice, can build one and one uh, warrior as well. Has the phalanx so all of a sudden 10 strength. Uh, so yeah, this open borders agreement is great for him, he needs the extra military actions. And now with the Colosseum already up to 4. Clonefish does not cancel the pact, he feels confident still, or maybe. Then we get the development of politics, he will build a lab, go for the theocracy, builds another lab. He, he could have done that before, so we're seeing uh, probably a, a weak link in our enemy's team. He could have built the philosophy first, because he has the properly, so he could build one more. And then the, the Theocracy would have cost one science less. Uh, so he's not playing uh, the cleanest match here. Ignoring the team rules and going for an open borders with his opponent instead of with his uh, uh, 
with his teammate and then wasting one science in this turn here. So that is a good sign for my team. Now Cashmill opens the development of planning. Gets the religion, so we from the planning we have religion, uh, trade routes and warfare. He took the religion here. We'll build a warrior and go for the St. Pete's Basilica. So with the rocks I definitely agree there. He doesn't have the civil actions to go for Machu. Uh, and happy faces uh, are always great here too. We'll reveal the fighting band, but he definitely can't defend if Hardco wants to go for an aggression. But he gets out of corruption next turn. I mean, 12 rocks still. Next turn, he can finish the St. Pete's. Maybe afterwards, go for the Universitas. Doesn't have a wonder yet, so this one was pretty cheap to grab the St. Pete's Basilica. Uh, and he could even follow that up next turn with the Universitas if he wants to. And then he would have great science too. So, yeah, still looking strong. I really hope that my team steps in and maybe punishes him a little bit. This is not a smile, we'll go for a knight. Upgrade that second mine, increase pop, so yeah, he's still missing military actions, but he will even go for another knight, so six strength for him. I mean, it could have also been interesting if he did something else, if like they usually you don't want to be the weakest when there's one opponent who's very strong, but uh, they are actually teammates, so Hardco could have easily, uh, I mean, of course, Hardco wouldn't go for an aggression on the this, not a smile, so. This is not a smell. Could have just said, okay, I won't go for strength because I know that the strong player won't attack me. But he decides against that. He will get stronger too. So let's go on to hardcore. Will he go for an aggression or something? Yes, he attacks Clonefish. Clonefish instead of casual. I mean, maybe even the correct move. First of all, it's very likely because of the... Uh, open borders agreement, but even against Cashmill, it would have been 100% guaranteed. The thing is, Cashmill has so many rocks uh, that Hardcore is definitely hurting Clonefish more by taking away his food than he would by taking away the rocks from Cashmill. Uh, and he gets the extra. Maybe also wanted the food. No, he could have also stolen food from Cashmill. So yeah, that's what Hardcore does. First aggression of the game. Increases pop. Let's see yet another knight. 13 strength. Monarchy for him. And alchemy. Uh, and then next turn he probably has to use Alex and afterwards he can go for Nostradamus. Clonefish. Cancels the open borders agreement now. So now he's... I mean either he know... I, I, I think I remember from the discord of our team that uh, the, my team was thinking that he probably now realizes that he's not in a team. Or that he is in a team game, but he could also just say, okay, I'm 13 to 4, I don't want to have open borders agreement with uh, this guy. I mean, it's not going to help him to defend, um, as we see him go for that much a bit true. I mean, uh, he won't have the irrigation, but he will have the iron now, next to he gets the code. So, uh, could, could work out for him. Now I'm afraid Casual will get even stronger, Casual can go for the Universitas. So we will finish the St. Pete's, grab the Universitas, grab the Swordsman. So next turn he gets the Universitas. He could have even gone for the Code of Laws this turn. So I'm not sure why he decided against it. Um, I mean, he does he really want to go for Swordsman next turn. He's still too weak to defend against Hardco. And he's not in... I guess like this at least he can get, defend against uh, Green. And Green will also get stronger now if he just copies a tactic. And he will go for Columbus. We'll build another knight. Okay, a lot of strength. Grabs the alchemy. Grabs frugality. Okay. Doesn't show a tactic. Doesn't copy a tactic. Uh, I mean, probably wants to copy the medieval army at some point. Um, I mean, they, I like that my team has the initiative now and it's super strong. It, just as a, maybe they are overdoing it a little bit, like uh, the third knight here maybe wasn't necessary and maybe he could have just copied the medieval army instead and keep the population from the knight. Because I'm not sure what the extra strength of the knight will provide. Um, and maybe he needed it to get out of corruption, I'm not sure. Um, but maybe instead he could have built the iron. I mean sure, he got the discount still from, uh, from Homea for one rock, built the knight cheaper, but... Uh, 
yeah, I mean, um, it's still looking great with uh, that many rocks. Another aggression, so Hardcore will not be using Alex. He will destroy a lab of clonefish. I mean, why doesn't he go against Cashmore? That's that's my big question here. Like, I mean, it would have been guaranteed 100% too, and taking away the science from Cashmore maybe would have been better. But Hardcore decides to get to go against clonefish. Will grab the Himeji Castle. Elects uh, Nostradamus and will finish the Himeji. So up to the uh, 11 strength or down a little bit of strength because he lost Alex, but up to 11 plus 3 from uh, from Nostradamus and Himeji Castle. Clonefish will open the Raiders, so him and Casual. So our enemy team losing rocks. That's very good for our team, of course. Clonefish will go for Knights. Can develop one and goes goes for Barbarossa. Okay, can build one knight, one knight from the pool with Barbarossa and another knight. So up to twelve strength, he's now the strongest. You will have a little bit of a problem with his happy phase next turn though. Uh, no population and no food to increase pop will give him some problems. Now. Casual will lose Hammurabi actually. Will go and grab himself Genghis Khan. He lets him. Goes and. Okay, he did, did want the science to have the swordsman. Um, will build a swordsman. Maybe does he have tactic? Yes, he does. He does have the other medieval army, so he's actually gonna go up to 9 strength. I, I guess, sure, then it makes sense that he didn't go for the code last turn. Because now he's able to defend himself and go up to 9 strength. So fixing his military and afterwards can still finish the universitas. Uh, Green has gone for the vast territory with Columbus. Uh, that's very nice. Um, we'll copy the tactic now. So up to 12 strength he goes as well. Can increase pop twice. Develop a lab and upgrade one. So he's still looking very solid and over overall, I would say. Like good strength, of course. That's where a lot of his stuff has gone. But also with the uh, iron already with the lab. Now upgraded to alchemy. And of course, the run roads providing an extra science production and the irrigation in hand and the vast territory. So food is looking a lot better than just having two farms. So I think he's very, very versatile at this moment, looking pretty strong. So I like that. Hardcore actually gonna skip his politics phase. He goes for monarchy, builds a lab, reserves a rich land. Does he grab the swordsman? Yeah, has the discount on that. Will also spend his military actions to copy the medieval army to go slightly stronger. Um, and he is the opposite of Cashmill and this is not a smile. No extra production for him yet. Um, but he does have the second one that does have the magic castle um, and got some extra rocks as well from going for his aggressions but aggressions will not happen for a little bit now because the strength for all of these guys is pretty equal but clonefish now has a problem he will go for the trade routes with casual so this might be a sign that they that clonefish has realized he's in a team game he's playing together with casual this will still not be enough. Uh, yeah, has to destroy mine here to build a religion. And then you can grab the last alchemy. So everybody has alchemies, uh, low rocks. So I think this uh, much pitcher will not be that great. It's gonna take a long time until he can finish that with only three rock production. On the other end, he would really need this because he's down to three rock production. So if he gets to finish the much pitcher, that would have been great. Not convinced that it was good to go with the theology because just having the religion might have been enough might depend i mean there could be immigration or something like that and it could have been better but uh, in my opinion he could have just saved the two rocks that he, uh, that he spent on the theology uh, and kept that to maybe get an earlier second iron or finish the match picture a little bit earlier all right so Casual's turn. He will go for the Court of Laws finally. Grab Cavalryman. Oh, he skips. Having to skip the Universitas one turn to have the Cavalryman. Um, I guess sure, if the Caval Cavalrymen are gone, he's, there's only one copy left. 
Could have could have been hard, but he could rely on Clonefish not taking the cavalryman. Yeah, it's a tough decision. I probably would have just finished the universe. This would have been such a good science boost, doubling his science protection. Um, and then he could have even upgraded the last farm and just say, I don't need the cavalryman that bad. But he decides to grab that tech. Now my team. Inhabited territory and hardcore able to finish uh, to win it. Uh, this is not a smile and casual not bidding at all So this is a, definitely a sign that uh, these guys are playing in a team game and they are aware of it So hardcore wins a colony here a little bit sad for the uh, colony stipulation if we would be going for that because remember there are extra stipulations um, where we would want to get as many colonies as possible now we have two colonies, but not on the same player, so that wouldn't count. This not a smart build. So Warrior to go up to 15 strength. Grabs an Opera and goes for farms 1 and 2. So yeah, now he has uh, everything a little bit. I mean, nothing where it's too crazy. 4 rock production, uh, 4 science, well, fine too. Food is looking very good now with uh, 2 irrigations and a healthy yellow bank. And a lot of strength, so yeah, still just really solid position from green here. Hardco opens the Crusades, so Green gets four culture from uh, Casual. Hardco rebuilds the Knight to go get stronger again. Uses some rocks, grabs selective breeding, and an efficient upgrade. So next turn, I mean, what does he do next turn? Doesn't have the science to go for selective breeding. Has rich land and efficient upgrade though, so at some point he's gonna get uh, a lot of food from that. But what he's missing more is rocks, so. Um, could have gone for coal, but it's also really expensive to develop that. So maybe select breeding is the right call. Clonefish Rebellion, but no one has a discontent worker. Uh, also keep in mind that Hardco's uh, Nostradamus is very good because he, of course, gets to see the cards that are being played and can tell that information to There's Not a Smile. So a lot of information for our team is gained by having Nostradamus. And basically knowing every single event in the deck is very, very useful. Clownfish goes for Robespierre and an Urban Growth. I mean, sure, he needs the rocks, definitely. Can upgrade next turn the Philosophies to Alchemy by just going for, just using the Urban Growth. So that's pretty nice. Alright, so up top again, Casual can finally finish his uh, Universitas, so... He had a super solid early game, as I said. At least the military pressure from my team has delayed this Universitas a couple of turns, so that's really good. I think it got delayed two turns, uh, so that's uh, at least something. I mean, now he's still looking very strong, beginning of H2, and he four signs six rocks. I mean, it's not that much better than, uh, than green, just one more iron, but for that he's a lot weaker. Um, Yes, happy faces. That's something that this smile does not have, but this is not a smile has of the vast territory. So actually, now I think they've kind of caught up and uh, looking pretty, pretty equal. Casual then will deny Bach. That is a dangerous game. That is a little bit dangerous because there, of course, is only one more opera. Uh, this is not a smile has one, so Hardcoke could definitely steal the second one and render Bach almost completely useless. Kishmir will upgrade one. Okay, I mean, doesn't change much. Maybe that's uh, so he can defend against uh, green if he had one defend card. So yeah, makes sense to upgrade then. And green will not go for an aggression, but open the foray. And my team wins it uh, two times. So that's six extra rocks for my team. That is a huge card uh, in a team game when you win it for both of your players. So extra rocks. And you will finally build that extra mine. So very good move in my opinion, getting up to those six rock production. Um, and grabs the Republic. Sure, he still definitely needs a new government form, sitting on the good old despotism with no extra civil or military actions. Um, yeah, sure, Conmon would be better, but he could still grab the Conmon later on. This is just a safety measure to grab the Republic here, and I agree with it. Now Hardco will push, we will open the Dark Ages, that hurts a little bit, three signs lost for this not a smile, and uh, just one for the enemy team. 
Hardcore will then go for the layup. Can upgrade one, two, so up to four science production he goes as well. Can get out of corruption by just going for one. Relation grabs the coal, so uh, didn't have to grab the coal last turn. Can still go for it next, I, I guess not next turn because of science, but in the turn after that. Um, so he's just going to delay his production a little bit. He's still going to have a great um, production at the end of H2. Uh, sadly, there's no what. This would be a great game to go for what. Um, but yeah, it's not it's not not a big problem. He still has the military advantage. He doesn't need to spend the rocks on anything besides upgrading his buildings. Um, so he's just delaying that a little bit or having it later than the other two guys. Clownfish goes for a new pact. Um, they had the other one before. Now they have the international trade agreement. So a lot of great pacts drawn by Clownfish. Uh, who finally is using them on the right uh, teammate as well. So international trade agreement, extra rocks for casual and extra food for clownfish. Very good pack for this team. You will then upgrade and start to build on the Machu Picchu. Can't finish it yet. Can grab a frugality. So I would say clownfish has the weakest position, but also not by not by a lot. Um, when he finishes the Machu Picchu next turn, his rocks are going to be better then, still not great, but at least better. His science is slowly getting up there. Um, his leader is pretty bad at the moment, but that could also change quickly when he goes for Robespierre and uh, Republic. So it's also a good move from Green to deny the Republic from Clonefish, uh, who doesn't have a lot of science. So going for Conmon with the Revolution and Robespierre wouldn't even be all that great. Cashmere goes for another wonder, the Railroad. And will actually have corruption, but that's it. So, I mean, this could be, yeah. I mean, sure. Could is there a stipulation for um, for the best rock production? I don't think there is. I, I think there's no extra stipulation for the most rock production. I'm gonna look it up really quickly. Um, no, no, no. So it's not gonna be for that. That could have been a great reason to go for the railroad, but there wasn't. There's not a smile, goes for the revolution. Oh, that's also really great. Doesn't have to spend the science, just goes for the revolution this turn. Um, gonna have some corruption, but not a big deal. And still has eight science saved up. Reign of Terror, Cashmere will lose one population. So great job by my team to not lose anything there. Hardcore goes for extra lab. I mean, works out great with the coal, so he will have seven signs next turn. Um, and then he can go for the coal. He's also gonna get the efficient upgrade, I'm pretty sure. We'll upgrade two swordsmen, grab the efficient upgrade and reserves. Um, so yeah, getting a little bit stronger here and then having the science. Six science is great from him. Uh, and then later on he can next turn start to upgrade his coal with the reserves, the rich land and the efficient upgrade. Um, yeah, sounds great, sounds great. Up to Clonefish once again, who gets the Knowledge of the Ancients, extra science uh, for a lot of people, especially Hardcore 3, extra science is great for him. Clonefish then finishes the Machu Picchu, goes for the Code of Laws, grabs one cannon, one urban growth, and builds a knight, okay, okay, I mean, sure, why not? Why not? He where did he get the food? All right, he got the one extra food from the from the pack that they have now. So he's, he was always sitting on two food, which really sucked. But now he even got to use uh, Barossa one more time. I would even have said he should play Robespierre now to draw the extra cards. Seems unlikely that he will be able to use Barossa again. But maybe, maybe he can still use him. He's at plus two food now thanks to the pact and the much pitch. So in two turns he will have four food enough for Barbarossa, uh, so maybe he didn't need to replace him with Robespierre yet. Cashmill will get the strategy, that's really great for him. We'll finish the railroad, go up to 15 strength, 9 rock production. So that's looking great. Uh, gets the strategy, so he's also starting to become a little bit dangerous, only hindered by that uh, uh, Genghis Khan. If he, when he loses Genghis Khan, he's gonna lose 4 strength. Uh, so with a strategy, he's looking very strong, but without Jenks Khan, not quite as much. But for the late game, he's definitely definitely looking scary with uh, having 
healthy yellow bank and easy solution where we faces uh, and good food so you can go for cavalryman very soon as strategy and railroad uh, so yeah next up this is not a smile goes for uncertain borders uh, he steals from clownfish so once again our team winning enemy team losing perfectly played by those two guys there's not a smile select breeding okay to deny deny that from clownfish i guess this i guess maybe not sure if he would have needed that we'll go and develop that opera and build one right now build another <laughs> warrior to go up to 20 strength grabs cannons sure sure still no leader for him but then we get international negotiations uh, so that's also another great card red can now decide what greens will steal from blue um, so we probably asked this not a smile what he wanted and then gave him according that so he did give him three science so there's not a smell again three sides from clonefish yeah who really would have needed that science so of course the right thing to steal here hardco will go for the coal can use the rich land to upgrade one next turn upgrade one more with efficient upgrade gets a cannon and then probably no not the breakthrough interesting i mean sure he needs happy faces so he doesn't want the breakthrough he wants the organized religion instead and he's finally getting up his rock collection. Very, very bold uh, louver by Clownfish, in my opinion. Like, you don't have the rocks for that. I don't see that really working out great for him. We'll take a breakthrough here as well. Upgrade with the urban growth. I think he's misreading with the situation a little bit, little bit here. Uh, he's not in the situation to spend uh, this many rocks on the louver when he's already looking kind of weak, in my opinion. Um, I mean, maybe. We want to see if that uh, will work out for him, but uh, I, I expect not. He will even need extra happy faces soon, uh, so he's going to run into a couple of problems. Um, yeah. Then we see Casual going for strategy. Increase. Oh, goes for the Cavalryman as well. Increases pop once. To build one. Can increase again if he wants to. Destroys the Swordsman to build another cavalryman okay 23 strength for him now so he is using his uh, rocks quite aggressively um, doesn't want to go for any urban buildings there is still the second opera so he could still get that and then he could transition into culture production uh, but for now he's transitioning into military becoming the strongest now he's had enough of these two guys of my team just winning and then we finally get a pact as well the promise of military protection so uh, one extra culture for green but four extra strength for hardcore so great pact for us it's not a smile we'll go for charles darwin can elect him grab the journalism increase pop could build another opera or a cannon what does he go for here builds a cannon 23 strength I mean, he also has to re really worry about uh, an aggression from Cashmill because this not a smile only has two MAs. So if he didn't build the cannon, eh, there could have could have been an aggression. And if like imagine if Cashmill has uh, uh, an aggression like the raid, the raid could destroy the alchemy and the opera. So 14 rocks lost. He can't have that. This not a smile can't have that. So he builds the cannon. Uh, he still needs MAs, that's what he's really missing now. He didn't get the strategy. Hardcore will push. Politics of strength. Um, yeah, Casual wins this now. Clonefish will lose it, so also not that bad for our team. And especially because this is not an H3, so this is not impacts. So it's not the biggest, biggest deal. Hardcore will go for... Uh, will go for Mr. Nobel. Will upgrade one more coal with the efficient upgrade can grab another rich land as well patriotism rich land develop the organized religion still has good science so next turn hopefully can get the selected uh, breeding online upgrade that with the rich land but now seven rock production also looking pretty good uh, so as i said is it has taken a couple of turns but he's finally going to be up to speed on his production 
And the same can't be said in the same regard about Clownfish. As we see here now, another colony, the vast territory, and Clownfish actually able to win this. This is actually big. Like, if Clownfish planned this, if he knew the vast territory was in there, then he was definitely right to keep Barbarossa here for a while. Um, yeah, th this is great from getting the vast territory and still having Barbarossa. So if he needs to rebuild this, he can just do that by going for Barbarossa. Only upside is he doesn't have the signs for cannons. Um, so he can't go for cannon and build those anew. So let's see if he will use Barbarossa. He builds, rebuilds Aurora, his rifleman. Rebuilds another Roria with Barbarossa. <laughs> and one more, then goes for Robespierre. Upgrades one mine. Grabs Engineering Genius. Yeah, the, the early grab of Robespierre. Um, there, there would have been a lot of leaders that would have been a lot better for him. And now he's going to miss the Cornmonts. I mean, Cornmonts are even debatable. Six signs to do the revolution and nine signs to develop normally. So Robespierre plus Acropolis in general isn't the best idea. And now, I mean, he might get the Republic and then it's still worth it. But it's also rather late. He doesn't have extra maze. So I see a lot of problems with this Maximilian Robespierre. And we start into H3. Now the final endgame will start. As we see another pact between these two, a sign of cooperation, another great pact in a team game. Oh, no, I didn't want to do that. Uh, I want to look at the overall standings. How is it looking? I mean, culture lead at hard, in Hardcore's uh, hand at the moment. There's not a smile with good culture production. Uh, and the rest I would call pretty equal. Uh, only downside is that uh, for the enemy team is that Clownfish probably behind a little bit, but also not that much. So I think we're going to have a very exciting H3. And of course, this is not just a normal team game. We also have to consider that impacts have extra value and that you somehow have to figure out how in the end of the match you are able to score an even amount of culture. Um, I, I, I just guess there's going to be a lot of uh, luck involved or guesswork involved to see which impacts you have. Um, definitely always when you see an impact and discard it, always note that down so you know that's not in. And then in your last turn, just do the math, uh, consider which impacts are in, and if you want to end with an even or an odd score, and then hope for the best. So we see Cashmill did get the um, did get the opera here. Can build one. He didn't rebuild. He just built one. Yeah. And then he will reveal a new tag, the classic army. So he's got that 28 strength. So he's also looking really strong. His biggest downside is that he only has uh, three science production. That's not that much. But 10 culture now, and still those nine rocks. Food also not looking bad. Yeah. This on a smile goes for team sports, increases population, develops team sports, and goes for one. I mean, he also has only never upgraded his alchemy. Now he, of course, doesn't produce science with the Realm Roads. He produces culture, so down to three science he goes to. Only hardcore with eight science production, still looking very good in that regard. And this not a smile grabs himself with patriotism. Sure, because that's definitely what he really, really needs. Uh, he did build the team spot, so he's gonna get some extra strength, but not enough to be guaranteed a defend against an aggression by Cashmel. Um, but the question is, is, is Yellow really gonna try that when he just needs a defend card? Even from H2, that would be enough to defend. So I think there's not a smile. Should be relatively safe now. So, Hardcore will push. The Rats. Ooh. Hardcore not losing anything. This is not a smile. Only losing two food. Enemies losing ten food. So great job, guys. Great team job, uh, team game. So uh, two food for our team. Ten for the enemy team lost. And now Hardcore will go for the farms. We'll also need to go for the happy faces. Upgrade one. And upgrade one more. Selective breeding. Grab navigation. Because why not? Yeah, yeah. 20 strength for him. Everything looking great. Now he all of a sudden has the best production in almost everything. I mean, sure, Rocks, uh, Casual is still looking better. Uh, but Hardco uh, definitely was able to catch up in everything in science. Uh, remember, at the start of H2, he had nothing upgraded, and now he has everything upgraded. So great comeback in infrastructure in the late game. Oh, middle game, H2. 
Cloudfish will go for democracy, can do the revolution. Uh, of course, you don't get the revolution discount uh, from the Acropolis, but he did get the discount from the Central Corporation, so it only cost him seven signs to do that revolution. We'll destroy a farm here, actually. Grab the selective breeding, inefficient upgrade, and reserves. I mean, sure, has a lot of civil actions now. Um, also has a lot of rocks, so next turn he can potentially finish this Louvre now. Has the Engineering Genius 2, could go for the Louvre and the Selective Breeding. But he's also falling behind in strength, uh, but I guess not that much. Casual doesn't count because it's his teammate, so he's only falling behind. Uh, this is not a smile, really. Inhabited territory, and this is not a smile, will win it for <laughs> a lot of units, that's for sure. Five units. I mean, most of them are just warriors. Um, so it looks like he has a plan of what he wants to rebuild here, I hope. I hope he wants to rebuild Canis and then maybe has the uh, mobile artillery. Uh, so that would be a great turn to transition. But uh, yeah, still expensive, but I mean, it's warriors. What do you really want to do with four warriors? Um, they're not that good in H3 anymore. Cashman goes for a Republic here, okay. Modern Infantry, another revolutionary idea. So he's getting two revolutionary ideas here. It's very great for him. Uh, his food is starting to fall behind, so he won't get much more extra population, but still 19 rocks. Mm, gonna be interesting to see where he uses that, but uh, with the revolutionary ideas that he's got now, he definitely has some options to develop something where he can spend those rocks. He's not a smile using the Patriotism. Okay, he does have the Mobile Artillery, will then build one and two cannons, up to 32 strength all of a sudden. So great turn to transition, so I now, now with that known, I agree with his uh, bid for the Inhabited Territory. So that's great. Grabs another Patriotism and an Oil. Okay, I mean, kind of expensive, uh, nine science. That's definitely the biggest problem he has at the moment, the science. Ooh, international tourism this early on, great pack for our team. Extra culture production, um, two extra culture production for green. And okay, only one for, for red, um, but still a good pack to have. Artco will use his own patriotism. Go for cannon, builds one. Destroys a mine, build another cannon. Does he have the, uh, the Napoleonic army? Yes, 36 strength from him. Grabs the air force. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, all looking very, very good. Uh, there's a big target on Clownfish, I, I would say. He has not the best military. At least he can go for cannons and then later on copy the Napoleonic army. Or don't go for cannons and just go for classic army. Uh, he has the rocks for that. Um, but there's definitely, I mean, look at that strength difference, 36 to 17. So if there is a war from Hardco, Clownfish would have a hard time defending it. So Clownfish goes for Gandhi. I mean, sure, Gandhi can be a solution when you're the weakest. The, my team doesn't have the most military actions. So he just tries to defend himself with Gandhi, go for the culture. So now the Louvre will be producing a lot of culture for him. Uh, he will have some problems with uh, corruption, but he can be upgrade one or two warriors. First of all, goes for one select breeding. I mean, the problem with the selected breeding is it's actually not that much more. Since the agriculture produced two food, thanks to the uh, Machu Picchu. Uh, so that definitely has some problems. You spent uh, four rocks to have one more food production and five science. Mm, uh, mm, probably not that great. He also grabs an efficient upgrade and that's it. Upgrades one, two and three. Warriors to get out of corruption. So 23 strength, but as I said, biggest problem, hardco. Four military actions, this notice met only the two, so it will be hard for them to go for aggressions or uh, or wars. Second Air Force and Third Air Force also show up, so my team will be getting two Air Forces and no Air Force for Clonefish. Casual now with the first Air Force on the board, will go up to 39 strength, perhaps an engineering genius. Yeah, his problem is still the, uh, the big problem of no civil actions, so that's what he's struggling with. Um, he is getting strong, he's keeping up in the strength, but he can't also produce culture on, or more culture while doing that. He would have loved uh, to upgrade a religion to opera, maybe in philosophy to opera, 
uh, if you had extra civil actions last turn, those 19 rocks just sitting there and not being used to upgrade these trash buildings to Opros is, is a shame, but one that I'm most happy about because it's the opponent. There's not a smile, what will he do? Develops a journalism, builds one. One problem that we are having is, I mean, both teams haven't played impacts yet, and that is maybe a problem I really, I mean, I think it's, maybe it's also too early to say because those impacts could show up before the end of the match, but we are nearing the end of, of the game and uh, you want to have as many impacts in there as possible. You want to know what impacts are in there as much as possible. So no, there's not a smile, only drawing two, um, uh, two cards each turn is a problem. And especially if they go for more military, they will not be drawing more cards. So that is one downside of this military play. Hardco will go for an aggression on Clonefish, stealing four science. Goes for Sid Meier. So once again, no card draw for him at all. Goes to computers and Sid Meier and engineering. Okay, so setup turn. He steals the science and goes for setup turn. And personally, I, I disagree with this decision to go for the aggression. I think it would have been more important, depending on his impacts and hand already, if he already has like one or two great ones. Maybe that's okay, um, but the three card draw that he's missing out here could be information and I think information is uh, is key here. I mean the game is definitely looking strong. I, I think they have a good shot, but nothing is decided. So you also have, want to still hurt your opponents and uh, this is looking like he's going to have a lot of culture production soon and stealing the signs definitely is good. But is it good enough? I will, I'm not sure if it's worth it to not get uh, three card draw when you really, really want that card draw to control the end of the match. Cloudfish also has to spend a maze rune. Actually, just not gonna get too many impacts, I guess. Um, goes up to 25. We have evolutionary idea and reserves and military theory as well as movies. So, yeah, this game is gonna not gonna last too long anymore. Do we see any impacts? No, still no impact. And that would be fun if we just don't have any impacts. Or if there's no impact in and Clonefish in his last position can just play the impact that makes all the scores uh, odd for the for my team. That would be a disaster. So I think, uh, yeah, as I said before, I think uh, we are having a problem here with the impacts. Casual will go for communism. He did go for the uh, Republic now, so he finally gets the civil actions. Recognized agriculture, communism. I mean, but now they are very low on science. Three science for Cashmere, three for Clonefish. He at least has the revolutionary idea. And they definitely are profiting big from the Santa Corporation. Saving science uh, is really, really good for them because they have such low production. There's not a smile. Crime Rave hitting himself and blue, so uh, it's okay, it's okay. We can increase pop, but yet another journalism, so 16 culture production. Einstein, civil service, could play the revolutionary idea, yeah, it does that. And an urban growth, okay. So just uh, upgrading culture production a little bit more. Culture still close here. Casual has taken the lead, but. Uh, Uh, there's not a smile on 65 now. Hardcore will play the first impact. Has ah last time. La last time there's not a smile has played the first impact. Hardcore not being able to play an impact. He just played uh, an H2 card because he doesn't have impacts probably, or he doesn't know yet if he wants to play the impact. Mm. So uh, again, if he had drawn three cards last turn, it might have been better. But I'm gonna stop complaining too much about that. From now on. National Pride hits casual, so he gets five extra. I mean, it's still not close. It's not like uh, these two, my team only needs to have an even score and they will win at the moment. Casual is in the lead, so they definitely also need um, culture. So he goes for Sid Meier. This is a great hint for him. He gets the Nobel Prize, gets to upgrade two computers, so 10 culture production plus the, the Nobel Prize. So 36 strength still, finally drawing three cards. Clonefish goes for movies, increase pop, 
goes for one movie, 17 culture protection for him, and reserves. So with him having production here as well, we are, we are very close, close game. Everything is very, very even here. We have 80 culture from him, 73, 56 and 82. So the enemy team at the moment is in the lead, um, but not by too much, not by too much. Let's see, casual, will you push? No, military alliance. Okay, that is not an impact. I, I think impacts... <laughs> I am just repeating myself. Uh, I thought it would be the most important part to push as many impacts in the deck as possible to know what you what you have put in. But I guess maybe they all think impacts are bad because they could destroy your final scoring and make you odd. So just having one in here. Um, and then hope that nothing else comes. Who knows? I mean, at the moment, my team has 100% of the information. And casual will go for... Okay. He goes for fast food chain, so he will get a wonder. Spend his rocks on that. 11 culture protection from him. Are there more wonders left? Only the red cross. Okay, only the red cross. 45 strength from him now. There's not a smile. Pushes another impact, so we now know two impacts. The opponents know none. Prosperity, a little bit of extra food. He goes for Einstein. Military theory, finally getting those MAs. And civil service, I guess. Multimedia, does he go for multimedia? Oh, multimedia instead of civil service. And he can upgrade one if he wants to. Can build one even. Uh, with the urban growth, you can build an H3 library, so 15 sign, uh, culture production, you also get the Nobel Prize now. Hardco will also push, so three impacts in from us. Also another colony that Hardco is able to win here. For just a warrior, that's great, that's really, really great for him. Democracy develops that. Sadly missing one science to go for navigation to get the Nobel Prize again, but he can build another computer. Yeah, four computers for him now, 18 culture production. Reserves, and that's it. <sighs> I'm still not sure, like uh, the good news, <laughs> look at that, 93, 93, 94, and Clownfish is at theoretical 96 with his production. And now I'm starting to think like this is a big advantage for us. Uh, three impacts from our team and none from the other. Not only for having even more odd scores, having the information, but also for just good impacts that they probably played that are good for my uh, my my team. Clownfish still no impact from him. They do have the advantage of having last position, but if Clonefish didn't push a uh, an impact here, he's not gonna draw again. So who is to tell that he even has an impact to play next turn? But usually having the last position, you can decide what impact to play in. Um, but he has no information what these impacts could be. Um, so the way this works is uh, if one, you can of course, if you have the information like my team does, you can count which impact you have. Does it give you even or odd score? You add that to your score and then uh, hope that it's gonna be an even one. But then of course, we get one more impact from casual here. Immigration hardcore loses one population. So first impact by the opponents. The opponent goes for one more opera. One more, okay, one more mine. Fast food chain. So he will end with even score. So he's counting on the Impacts to be even as well. Which I think is in general the right approach because more impacts give even scores than odd because a lot of them give two, two culture for each something. Um, so they can only be even. So if you don't really know what's coming, it's more, more better to end with even score and only get even, uh, even impacts. Economic progress, that is an advantage for my team. Uh, they both have their turn still. It's not a smile. We'll go for pro sports for mechanized agriculture. Gives himself Nobel Prize. Upgrades food. 
so he will also end with even score. He puts his food to six, uh, actually nine. So I f that is bad then, right? I mean, not super bad or anything, but that is not what you want because the improved agriculture now would give him an odd number of culture. Of course, he could know that the impact of agriculture is in there and another impact that's going to give him odd culture, then they would make that even again. This is too much. I have no idea. Especially because I literally know none of these impacts. So I have no idea what's coming. International agreement doesn't matter. So we have six impacts in the end. International Red Cross finished as well for Hardco, uh, for Clonefish by Hardco. Hardco will build a religion, so he will have odd culture. That, 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 that is weird then. Right, or are there, I guess there are some impacts where you get, depending on your position, get even or odd culture. For example, input of culture gives you 15, that is odd, or 10, that is even. So this does not mean that they made a mistake. It could mean that Hardcore knows that, for example, input of culture is in, he would get 15, that would give him an, an even score afterwards. This not a smile would get, what would he get from culture? Um, none, actually. So yeah, there could be input of culture. So how how are, we, how are we looking in culture in general? Casual with 136, this not a smile with 126. Hardco with how much? How much does he have? 127. <laughs> yeah, 27, 26, 36. And then Clonefish will have the last turn. Really push an impact? No. No impact from him. No extra information for his team. He's going for culture. He's going for law. He will win culture here now. That could mess up Hardcore's score. This is so exciting. This is so exciting. So we finally get it. We have six impacts. None, none of the impacts. So six impacts in total have been played this game and we're gonna see all of them resolved here at the end. Um, and then of course, culture is very close. So it's also important if, you, if everyone gets even uh, even culture, um, it's also important to uh, see, of course, how much culture they get, because my team at the moment is lower in culture, but they have more impacts. And also interesting to note, as I said before, all of them have gone for even culture, besides Hardcore, who decided to have odd culture. Um, so I, I hope that that means that since we have more information, since we have more impacts in, they only have one impact and we have five. So I hope that this is good intel and the right move uh, to see that Hardcore has odd culture. So let's see here, let's see those impacts. First one, science, five, zero, 15. So now Hardcore is on top and has even culture. So this is great for us, casual with the odd culture now. So this was most likely played by Hardcore or by my, by our team. I mean, all of the impacts besides one have been played by my team. Colony 6063, looking even better for my team. Still odd score for both opponents and more culture and even scores for my team. We get culture, 10, 0, 5, 15. <laughs> A lot of moving around here. I love this final scoring here. So still looking very good for Hardcore with the lead, even score. Everybody has even score now. Agriculture, 10, 3, 8, 13. So good culture for, this is not a smile, but sadly odd score for him. Architecture, 16, 9, 12, 6. And the last one is Variety 12, that can only be even so, damn. This Not A Smile will end with an odd score and the other two with even score and Hardcore also with even score, so at least we take first place, but sadly we don't take second. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, still, still great, great game by my two opponent, uh, by my two teammates. Uh, also well played by the opponents. Uh, like this is a super close game. Uh, congrats to them for both ending with even score without having much information. Um, and actually, yeah, these the three bottom guys ended with even culture. Um, hardcore ended with odd, but ended up with even. 
this novice might end up with odd score, sadly. So I think very well played by, by my team. The only problem was probably, um, like, I would imagine this novice might play the, uh, the agriculture. So he knew at least one odd culture would come. But he thought he would get one more odd culture. Like, he thought he would win... I can, uh, variety can't be odd culture, so that is a safe one to not change even more odd. Agriculture, this not as man knew. He, he played food at the end, so he knew that would that he would get odd culture from that. So he must have thought that he would also get odd culture from the bit of culture, maybe? No, he, he knew he wouldn't win culture. So 14-14, he knew he wouldn't win that, and Clonefish had more already before. So I'm also trying to figure out which one had been played by casual in science was probably played by my team so that was even colonies was also even so which one did this not a smell expect to be odd besides the uh, agriculture i don't know i don't know i guess this, this must probably mean i mean some of I, I guess variety maybe has been played by casual and maybe maybe the idea by my team was was one will have an even score if my opponent if the opponent played an even score and one will have even score if he played odd score so they played perfectly then um they had the they wanted to secure first place and they did that so if the opponent had played not variety but something else that would have given odd score to everybody hardcore would have odd score but this not a smile would have even score and he would have secured first place if they thought that if that was the idea then they did that perfectly we sadly don't get the second position but we get the first and that's uh, the most important one and the most points. So congrats to Hardco and the Sunder Smile. Uh, great team, team game, great team effort getting those puntos for us. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this crazy game. A lot of, uh, <laughs> especially at the end, even odd, what is it? Uh, so hard to keep track of this, but a uh, very, very interesting and amazing game. I had a lot of fun watching this one. I hope you guys uh, understood what was going on and also had fun. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and see you next time.